And welcome back to Mr. What Present. Happy New Year, everybody. Hope everybody had a safe and exciting entry into 2018. And I certainly have one here today with the superstars of the Sheldon Theater. We have Mr. Bob Rowe here, writer, lyricist, musician, and Kim Larson from the Thrill Peddlers family, among many other things. Uh -huh. Welcome to the show, you guys. Talking you. today about Megabytes the Musical. What inspired this show and why are you excited to put it on here at the Shelton Theater in a week? A week from well, now. Well, uh, the whole many people have told me through the years, why don't you write a show about tech, technology? So I've been thinking about it, thinking about it. I have other shows running. So eventually I sat down and made a list of uh, subjects about technology, things that bother me and I think bother lots of other people about just dealing with technology on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's a computer mm -hmm. or the phone or whatever. And uh, I came up with a list of uh, numbers. We got about an hour, a little over an hour's worth of material for uh -huh. a good review, musical review of comedy songs all about the little things that bother us and make us crazy about dealing with the internet and technology. Each one presents a situation that most people deal with uh, in their daily lives. And there sure are a lot of those, right, Kim? Right. Uh, oh, what yeah. bugs you about this, this <laughs> new technology I era? I spent two hours today just trying to get an appointment at the Apple Store to get my battery replaced. So <laughs> there's an example right there. Right. And just the way that, you know, how everybody is so into their phones today. You know, it's just, it's a little isolating in a mm -hmm. way, you know. And to give a little context, you guys have uh, put up other shows before about other sort of San Francisco specific themes. Uh, we know of shopping and we know about foodies. I've actually been working with Maury for over 10 years and I wasn't shopping the musical, which of course, like the title would suggest, was uh, around shopping and commercialism and that kind of thing. And then we did Foodies the Musical and uh, that was about the food scene and different food issues and uh, they're just a lot of fun. A lot of the people we've been working together on these shows and uh, we just kind of created our own little family where we can just click in and mm -hmm. kind of know what to expect and know how to optimize, you know, the jokes and uh, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Maury, so you write the songs, you write the music, you come up with the drama, with the action. Uh, what is the process? Uh, how do you, how, how long does it take to get to this point with the concept and what starts it all? Well, I'd say it's taken about a year to write this. Uh, write uh, <clears throat> the numbers, of course, you sort of overwrite it at first. You, know, you write more material than you actually use, and then you get and get into the process of cutting various things that maybe don't fit or go a little on to a little too long about a particular subject. But um, generally, it's uh, uh, my forte. I mean, what I enjoy doing most is doing uh, songs, mostly songs, and also some comedy sketches in a format that's known as a review, which is really not that popular these days, but it's a, a series of songs and sketches, comedy songs and sketches. There's no plot. It's kind of like Saturday Night Live in a way, but a musical version of Saturday Night Live, where each one, each number has its own point, uh, usually some satiric, mm -hmm. satirical point. Yeah. And uh, and then we just go through all the numbers and mm -hmm. uh, and have some fun. Critics are raving about how how sophisticated and smart and witty you are in your lyrics. Oh, that's very nice. And uh, with humor. Uh, all doors will open, as you know, Kim, right? Oh, yeah. I'll attest to that. I think Maury is like a really fabulous wordsmith. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always tell him uh, when we're rehearsing, I go, you know, I work as hard on getting these lyrics down as I do when I'm in a Shakespeare show. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because the words are, there's so many words, <laughs> it's so intricate intricate there's so many different rhymes and internal rhymes and everything and i know he thinks i'm sucking up to him when i say that <laughs> but it's true i actually sit there and score out every mm -hmm. song just like i do when i'm working on a shakespeare yeah. play mm -hmm. what is your uh, background are you are you a piano player or a musician originally or where well i i played piano chords all my life you mm -hmm. know starting as a kid and uh uh, I've been writing shows for quite a few years. Uh, besides theatrical, I've written quite a few theatrical shows, and uh, they also have written quite a few shows for corporations for special shows, mm -hmm. special events, sales conferences, and that kind of thing. And uh, so, you know, it's been uh, it's been a very 
very enjoyable uh, pursuit for me. Yeah, that's that's interesting uh, that you would write for corporate events. How does that play out? Like you would write a, a mini play for 10 minutes or so and then have people act it out at the... Yeah, for instance, I go into like Levi Strauss or Apple. These are a couple of the clients I've dealt with. And I say, talk to me about the company. What is going on in the company now? What are some of the issues? Um, what Who are some of the people or who are being talked about, you know, who would be recognized. Um, what are some of the funny things about those people? What are some mm -hmm. of the characteristics? And uh, what are some of the products that you're dealing with and so forth? And I try to get as involved as I can in the corporate mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. of that company. And then I write a show, usually about a 45-minute show, about uh, about those uh, subjects. And the the company gets a big kick out of it. That it's a exciting. great way. It's a great way to give a, a message to the employees who come to the show mm -hmm. instead of a speech. Right. You know, so it's much more entertaining, more effective. And that's probably where the, I, the idea of this show came from, I would imagine. It's very similar, very similar. Uh, one of the songs I really like about uh, what I've heard so far is Tech Problems. Who knows most about technology these days? It's children. So uh, the name of the song is, if you have a tech problem and you can't solve it, call an eight-year-old. He'll be able to work you through it. <laughs> and this is a song that Kim is singing, correct? Yes. Exactly. Uh -huh. Perfect. So here we go. If you got a tech problem that you can't solve, ask an eight-year-old. He'll show you how easy it is to resolve. Ask an eight-year-old. The kid will quickly grasp the facts and cut to the problem's essence. This skill set seems to be inherent in prepubescence. He's like a teacher who will never scold, so ask an eight-year-old. You don't have to pay the kid, that would just seem tacky. You might offer advice that he could use, like giving the cure for acne. If you want the smartest tech person in the room, ask an eight-year-old. He must have started learning in the womb. Ask an eight-year-old. But if the gobbledygook you see makes no reason or rhyme, be sure to call before 7 p.m. cause that's the kid's bedtime. He's like the geek squad in one human mold. Just ask an eight-year-old or his younger sibling. Just ask an eight-year-old. Couldn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Kim's uh, amazing voice here. <laughs> Uh, what are you feeling about the show? Is it ready to go on a week from now? Are you guys really close? Are you yeah, guys still... Yeah, we are in really good shape. Uh, you know, we're getting to the point where now we're starting to add in costumes and lighting and uh, st we call it stoolography mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, in a lot of reviews or cabaret shows, the stool is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we use stools uh, not only to sit on at times, but as uh, tables, etc. And they're constantly moving in between mm -hmm. numbers. So that's one of the last things we're adding in now, too. And it seems to be like a, a, a conscious choice to keep the sets fairly simple uh, in all your productions. Is that correct? Yes, so because, this one? because each number is set in a different setting. As Kim was saying, a stool can be a table, it can be a car, it can be a, you know, a, uh, whatever you want, a sofa, it can be whatever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. So uh, we so, just, by changing stools and, you, you know, using the audience's imagination... Um, we go from one set to another. Mm -hmm. And Kim, we've uh, interacted before with other productions. You're amenable uh, shows in town. <laughs> uh, for the most part, uh, toured the comedy and the ridiculous. Right. We right. met uh, <laughs> in Pearls of Shanghai mode at Thrill Peddlers. Yep. And uh, an amazing other thing that you do is to run the uh, gay pocketbook. Uh, Tell us more about your site business and how much uh, it comes to play and how you interact with the community here. Um, well, it's uh, actually very important. I publish, uh, I can hold it up right here, <laughs> Gay Pocket San Francisco Guide. 
and it's a GLBT guide that I publish quarterly to the city, uh, not only for visitors, but also for locals as well. And of course, being an actor and being involved in the arts community, I like to really have the arts section beefed up as mm -hmm. much as possible. And everybody knows about this Gay Pocket book. You can find it in so many stores in town. And uh, if you're new to the scene, you can find all kinds of amazing things to do. Yeah, it's great. It's great for newcomers, definitely. I've met people, you know, sitting in a bar looking at the guide and mm -hmm. I'm, hey, where'd you get that? Oh, I'm right over there. And they start talking about it. And uh, then I say, well, I am the publisher. So. <laughs> and then you get laid. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know me too well. You know me too did well. you uh, did you start this idea from your involvement in the arts? Or which came first? Which is the chicken and the egg? Well, I was actually working at Theater Bay Area. I started this 17 years ago, and uh, I was planning on leaving. And I had uh, worked a lot there, helping out with arts marketing and stuff. And uh, when I realized that San Francisco, one of the premier GLBT visitor destinations in the world, mm -hmm. didn't have a specific marketing vehicle mm -hmm. uh, for targeted for visitors, that's when I started coming up with this idea and going, okay, I'm going to take my shot at starting mm -hmm. my own business. And 17 years later, I'm still doing it. So, And uh, it's a pretty... Uh it's a pretty frequent occurrence that in the drag world, the theater world, we all have like a day job and then at night everything goes out the window in a different direction. Oh, yeah. In your particular case, does does it combine uh, smoothly with, with the theatrical uh, interest or is it like completely different lives? Oh, I don't know. It all kind of overlaps. I'm also a part-time tour guide as well. Mm -hmm. So all those worlds, they're definitely interlapping circles in there. Let's get back to our show brain here. So you were watching San Francisco change, uh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. um, what is the general feeling in the show? Are you laughing at the tech change? Are you concerned about the tech change? Is it like a farce or is it like a, a more of a, of a you know, conceptual uh, reflection about where are we going with this? It's just really, I guess you would say it's a bunch of jokes set in musical form. Mm -hmm about the, the, uh, the anxieties we go through in dealing with technology every day. I think everybody will be able to, most people will be able to relate to it. Mm -hmm. um, no matter how long you've been around, uh, some of these things, like if you go, you know, you, you get customer support, and then they ask you for a rating, and they plead with you, don't, if you give me anything less than a 10, I'm fired. Mm -hmm. you know? So they put a lot of pressure on yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Or we have a number about a woman who went to Harvard, and she used to date this guy, and she broke up with him, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh-huh. <laughs> kind of regrets it, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's a very funny song. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite um, things in the show is a, it's a comedy sketch, and it's about a confessions app called Priest in Your Pocket, where you can go on, download the app, give them your sins, and within seconds you receive absolution. Very so. nice. <laughs> That's what it can be. Well, the technology the has show. arrived. I'm heading to a conference, supposed to last all day, but I had to tell you how I feel before time slips away. I must confess to you, ASAP. I hope you'll hear my plea, PLZ. The very thought of you makes my heart swell. I pray you will not say LOL. It seems I've loved you since your DOB. If you say no, I'll never RIP. And so I'm telling you, FYI, I can't live without you. I L Y. O M G. My plane takes off in a minute, bound for Newport News. But I'm texting back since you have answered all my FAQs. The 
the dates for the show, January 19th through March the 3rd. What size and how many uh, people can you accommodate per the show? The great thing about the Shelton, from my point of view, is very small, intimate. It's about 55 seats. Mm -hmm. So everybody can see everything. You can see all the little gestures that the actors make. You can hear all the words. It doesn't have to be amplified, mm -hmm. you know. And so, and you're right there. It's a very intimate experience. You're right there with the performers. It's kind of like a nightclub, in right. a way. And it's really close to Union Square, so you guys get good foot traffic. Do people walk in sort of that have no idea what they're walking into? Or it's mostly people that know the troupe and know your work and regular San Franciscans. What is the vibe in the audience? I would say it's both. I mean, you know, some people do walk in off the street. They see the name up there in the advertisement. And they'll walk in just to curious to find out what this is all about. But uh, the great thing about San Francisco and, you know, like New York and a few other little cities, Chicago maybe, um, is their interest in the little theater. People are adventurous. They'll go out, you know, instead of a, going to a Broadway show every night, they'll go and see what's going on in the small theaters, the intimate theaters. And uh, that's how we've been able to survive for a long time on a lot of these shows. Mm hmm so everybody come out January 19th, March the 3rd, the Sheldon Theater. Uh, just so you have all the information, here is the website, megabytesthemusical.com. Come back to it often. So who's in here? We got some uh, heavy hitters in the cast this well, year. Well, yeah, these are, <laughs> that's Deborah on the starting from left. That's Deborah Russo and then David Goodwin. And Lisa McHenry and uh, the guy on the right. I'm not quite sure who. That oh, that's right. It's Kim. Yeah, he yeah. looks familiar. And, and Kim, you were uh, recently. You were in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. If people have seen that show, uh, that was a hit. Oh, it was a huge hit. Yeah, it was really fun. It was last summer at Theater Rhinoceros. Produced it at the Gateway Theater, which was formerly known as the Eureka Theater. And in fact, it was, I think it broke all of our ticket sales in the history of the theater, which has been running for 40 years. Um, so uh, we're going to do it again this summer. Very so nice. I encourage people to check that out as well later on this summer. And they can go to uh, www.therhino.org to get more information on that. I never go out and I live alone and I spend all day clutching my mobile phone knowing that my number he only hits strictly by accident whenever he sits. But call! I want to hear from my best friend from the bottom of his heart, not his other end. But call! I hate to be pushy, but why am I just called when he scratches his tushy? Well, there's no reason uh, humoristic comedies should not be serious, especially in this day and age where uh, the entire environment is a big joke. Are you coming up with <laughs> Trump the musical? When is that? Oh, oh, I don't know. It could Too be soon? Run. I could be around the corner. <laughs> I don't think it's too soon. I, I think if we put a, a red wig on David, he could play. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming. This is the end of the show already. Right. Can't wait to see uh, the you. results on stage next week. You bet. Look forward to seeing you uh, at the theater. Everybody at the Shelton Theater, Megabytes the Musical. This has been our show. Get your tickets. Seven weeks only. Bye-bye, everyone. See you soon. I'm behind him all the way. But